To help answer this question, I have a story for you. Perry Spencer, he's shown here, was working for Raytheon in the 1940s on the design and construction of magnetrons for radar. Magnetrons generate high power microwave signals and with a frequency range from 300 megahertz to 300 gigahertz. So a bit higher than the E1 component that we're considering which goes up to 300 megahertz. While conducting some experiments he noticed a chocolate bar in his pocket had melted while it was unintentionally exposed to the electromagnetic waves that he was working with. As a result of this he started developing the concept of the kitchen microwave. The electromagnetic wave gener generated by a, a microwave is a sinusoidal wave and since the electromagnetic wave is sinusoidal the applied electric field comprising the electromagnetic wave periodically reverses direction according to the sign of the sinusoid. So each time the electric field reverses direction the water molecules in the food inside the microwave will rotate to try to keep aligning themselves back and forth and back and forth with the applied electric field whichever direction it might be in. As the water molecules rotate they're stuck in a lattice, a chemical lattice, right? So then there's going to be friction between neighboring water molecules and this friction is going to heat up the food. This process of cooking by microwaves was patented in 1946 and by the 1970s microwaves were a common household item. So, knowing this, let's think about return to our measurement system. The electric field of the EMP is also sinusoidal and although the frequencies we're considering in the EMP are a bit lower, uh, the effect is still going to be the same and the effects on people are not really well understood in, for that frequency range and it's probably a good idea to shield any people in the area during the experiment. So take out your in-class project notebooks and describe how in our measurement setup we will probably want to make sure to protect any people in the area from the EMP especially considering the very strong high amplitude signals we're going to be dealing with the sinusoidal EMP signal is going to cause the water molecules in the person's body to rapidly oscillate and the health effects are um, not super well understood although certainly we can expect that there could be some some, uh, some heating effects possibly of the E1 component and the electric field amplitudes we're considering are really high so protecting people in the area will be important